Today, I've got a very exciting workflow. I'm going to be showing you how to create coherent AI animations without all the glitching all over the place. Before we start, I must say that this workflow would not happen without Xanthius, aka Six Hunt. He has created the script that I'm using to produce these results. Now, I have worked out a workflow to use around this script to get really nice results that you can control every aspect of. To be honest, using stock footage is pretty useless because you have absolutely zero control on what that person's doing. Of course, you can get a green screen and train a model to look like yourself and act the part but that makes absolutely no sense because then you have to be hiring a team of actresses and actors. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to have ultimate control of your characters, what they look like and what they do. Before we start the step-by-step -step process of what I did to achieve these animations I'm going to give you an overview of the workflow. So with that said let's hop into the workflow overview. For those who have guessed on my Twitter and Instagram and other socials that I was using mocap data you are correct. There are several places you can get mocap data from. So you can pick up mocap data for free or you can make it yourself on your iPhone. Granted that's not the best way to do it, the best way to do it is to use a mocap suit but they are rather expensive. So I simply just mix and blend my purchased mocap data in with my facial rig that I control with my phone and it's easily compiled together in iClone by Character Creator. The next step is to create an actor and just add that mocap data. The actor is essentially telling the AI what loose styles we want so it doesn't have to look exactly like your end result, just a guide for the AI. The last part is to use automatic 111 web UI with six hunts Python script enabled and control net enabled as well and I show you exactly how to do that. I'm also using can you guess a Scarlett Johansson trained Laura file if you haven't noticed that already as well as a diffusion checkpoint file. I'm actually using both of them and I'll show you which ones I use. You can always train your own to create your own styles but there is thousands and thousands of models and textual inversions and hyper networks and LoRa's being created all the time. So you can look through the list and see which one you like. And if you're using for a commercial project, I suggest you make your own. The first step is to create a base of our character. Now this doesn't need to look exactly like your character. You just need to keep the features such as the hair, the style of the clothing and their physique. Now the face can be overwritten with the AI but it's quite good to keep similar features although again like I say it doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's just something there to guide and help the AI. So I absolutely love Character Creator for just dragging and dropping hair on and have stylization, add clothes. I can add additional clothes via Blender. I can buy them from the marketplace. The same with the hair. You can use the hair that is in the system. You can change it. You can make it longer and everything is built into a pipeline which I absolutely love. Obviously it comes at a cost but for me it's worth it. The second step is to get your mocap data which essentially is your actors movements what they're going to do you can make your own by making a video of yourself and uploading it to websites like Plask and DeepMotion and what they will do is export your FBX file for free I simply drag and drop for that exported FBX file onto my character in iClone and then start with making the character talk now there are multiple I ways love you. you can do this you can use their face you. wear you can use their actor lip you. which is really cool because you can use AI you. on top of it to I love change you. your voice voice. Once I'm happy with the animation I can either send it to Unreal Blender and put cameras in and record it from there but to be honest I don't even do that at this point. I just go to render and render video and go to image and then set it at sequence and then my output size to what I want to use and then I render and this takes about two minutes to render the frames ready 
for stable diffusion. I get a lot of questions about what GPU I have. You don't want my computer. I actually use a cloud GPU, which in non-technical terms is a remote computer. So I actually just connect, sign in and use my stable diffusion template on there. So it's very, very easy to use. You can see my prior video on how to set it up and install. In this video, I'm going to be using ControlNet. So you'll need to have that installed. That's also in my previous video. So it shows you my complete setup from there and how I use it. Anyway, on with the video. So I just log into my run pod. Now, if you're using a local version of automatic 111, this will work for you because the file structures are exactly the same. So there's a couple of things that we need to set up before we get started. So we've got to make sure we've got a checkpoint file. So I'm going to load this into the back end of my stable diffusion. To do this, I'm just going to connect to my pod. So I'm going to connect to the Jupyter Lab, which is my file structure that runs my automatic 111. This is the same as the file structure that you find on your local version of stable diffusion. As you can see, if I click on the stable diffusion file, you'll probably recognize this file structure as exactly the same as your local one. And that's why you can follow along if you're doing this locally on your PC. So the first thing we want to do is go to models and then stable diffusion. You need to put your checkpoint folder in here. And as you can see, I'm using a realistic vision.ckpt. And if we go over here to civet AI, you can see this is where I downloaded it from. So you, you can download it here on your local version. If you're using RunPod, just press this down arrow and model safe tensor, right click on that, copy link, come back to your Jupyter Lab and click on terminal down here and just simply type in we get space control V for paste and hit return on the keyboard and that will ultimately download the file. Now we use the we get protocol because it's the quickest way to download a large file onto RunPod. You can download it locally to be seen and drag and drop it into file structure but it can take sometimes a long time to do that especially if you've got slow internet connection. So this is my preferable way. If it's a small file I usually just download it locally to my machine and drag it across but checkpoint files tend to be quite big. See there it's downloaded and it's given it a horrible name without an extension. So we're going to hit F2 on the keyboard and name it dot CKPT. I'm naming it silly because I've already got that file. So now that's done, we can close down this terminal window and we want to now load in a LoRa file. So if you don't know what a LoRa file is, it gives you the uh, stylization on top of your checkpoint file. So I'm going to be using these in combination in this video. And I feel like I get quite good results from doing this. We go up the hierarchy back to models and then go to LoRa. So you should see LoRa. We were just in that folder there. So click on LoRa. And if you ever lost to where I am, just look at this path here and it will tell you exactly where I am. We go back to Civit AI. So I'm going to be using the Scarlett Johansson LoRa file. I'm not going to take a complete likeness. I'm just going to take pinch uh, just for this tutorial to show you. You can actually create your own LoRa styles. And if you want me to do a tutorial on that, this is a really small file. It's 144 megabytes. So you can just download that locally to your machine and then come over to Jupyter Lab. And if I go to downloads, can see I've got it here and you just drag and drop it into there. The last thing we need to do in this back end is import our script. So if you press this button again to go up the hierarchy and come to scripts, it gives that a click and we are going to be using six hunt script in here. If you go to Xanthius dot itch dot io this is where you can download your file if you can afford it please donate to him he's given the stable diffusion and ai community loads and helped out massively but if you can't afford it you can press no thanks and download it for free which is really generous of him and that will download that to your local machine once it has downloaded come back to your downloads and simply drag and drop again into your run pod. So you should see it there, multi-frame underscore render. 
yeah, we have done everything we need to in the back end. So now we need to look at the front end, which is the automatic 111 web UI. So we come back to my pod. We're going to now connect to the Stable Diffusion web UI, which is the interface. Again, this is the same as your local version. So we're going to head directly to the settings tab up here and then come down here to control net. There's a couple of things here we just want to check. You can add multiple control net models to one render. I'm going to call it render for now on, I think. And uh, I've got two. I'm only going to use one model, but I wanted to show you this here. So you can put all nine if you really wanted to, but my favorite is actually Cali, so I'm just going to be using one. If you come down down here you need to allow other scripts to control this extension this is vital you need this to be checked I repeat you need this to be checked once that's all done we click on apply settings and then click on reload UI you're gonna get a bad gateway do not panic this is normal do not worry so we're gonna just close that window and come back to my pods and click on your connect to HTTP and again this will reload your web UI with all your settings done now let's get to the fun bit so we're going to go to image to image which is this tab here and if you see this little sun here i think it's a sun under the generate button give that a click and then we're going to go to the laura tab and here you can see your laura styles so like i said before we're going to be using the scarlett johansson now if you don't see your laura file in here you can give it a refresh if that doesn't work i advise you to come back out of your pods click this hamburger icon and restart please do not reset you need to restart your pod and that will take a minute to restart everything and that should refresh everything in here so i'm going to click on the scarlett johansson and as you can see I added that there to my prompt we are going to be using minimal prompting in this video you might be happy to hear I'm going to close this window now we are done with prompt here is invoking the laura script so we just need to write something for our negative prompt you can come back to civic ai and if you see this little information button give that a click and you can pretty much plagiarize the heck out of of this negative prompt I'm going to then just paste it in here I find that the best prompt is the simplest prompt I'm just going to write photo of scar scar yeah. so now we need to add our first image to our image to image now I'm going to click on here and navigate to my 3d files that I just churned out and it's pretty ugly 3d model to be fair um but we're going to change that so we're going to come down to the settings and in the sampling method we are going to go to dpm 2m Carraris. sampling steps i'm going to probably increase to about 30 i'm going to keep it relatively low width from height 512 by 512 because i want this to be a really quick render to show you in real time cfg scale I'm going to keep that at seven denoising strength this is one of the most important factors here now i'm just going to show you how bad this is going to look then click generate the denoising strength is quite high so it's going to not look like this image it's going to look more like scarlett johansson so we need to decrease that so the less denoising strength there is the less it's going to look like Scarlett Johansson so we just want a mix so I'm going to go 35 and then see what happens just click on generate and there you go that, that's a bit better it's important that you upload the first image of your animation as this will guide the rest of your animation lips there we go and that should apply this to your finished result and there you go she has red lips we are going to now lock in that seed at minus one every single frame i produce will generate a new seed i quite like this seed for this image so i want to keep that consistent in all the images so i'm going to press the recycle button to lock that in we're going to open control net and come down remember i said you can import multiple models so you could use normal you could use head i'm just going to use one i'm going to click on enable to make sure it actually is working and then the pre-processor i'm going to go to canny and then the model i'm going to choose 
canny. <laughs> I'm going to keep the weight at one. Now I've played around lots and lots with this, fiddling with absolutely every setting. And for me, I find the default settings usually work the best. So the last step is to load up the script. And this is super important before you load up the multi-frame script. Please do this, otherwise your render will not render. Okay, <laughs> so click on this image here and send to image to image. That is an important step. So now we're ready to start the script, which is the multi-frame video rendering script. So click on that. So the initial denoise strength needs to be set at zero. Leave the append interrogated prompt at each iteration and none. Third frame image to be first gen. And it's super important to click this upload guide frames button, which is easily missed. So just give that a click and then upload all your frames that you want to render and then enable color correction and then choose input frame on the loopback source ready to rumble. So let's generate. So it will look like it's rendering just one frame. Do not worry. This is normal. There is no front end interface to show you how much your animation is progressing. Sadly, it will just look like it's doing one frame. I assure you, it probably hasn't. So we come back to Jupyter Labs and we need to go up to the top level the workspace, go to stable diffusion web UI, again, the same on your local version, go to outputs, go to image to image images here, and then go to your most recent version. I've got quite a few here. So now you just have to wait patiently for your files to be exported. So they're exported as frame hyphen zero zero and then continue from there. So I'm using After Effects to do the post-production and put my files all together. You can use whatever you want. The word on the street DaVinci Resolve is pretty good, but to be honest, to get the D-Flicker plugin that everybody's talking about that smooths out your animations, it will cost me around about $270, something like that. And I'm fighting with myself at the moment because that is quite expensive just to gain a plugin. So I'm going to click on new composition. I'm going to make it 512 by 512 and click OK. I'm going to go to file, import and then files. I'm going to select the first file and shift selects the last file and then select PNG sequence. I'm going to make sure that box is checked and then I'm going to go to import. I'm then going to drag those frames down to my timeline and just shorten my timeline to the same length of my files. Now you can see the first three frames of this animation are junk. You do not want them. Now Six Hunters are very aware that this is a bug. So I'm just going to move the timeline across so we don't see them. So there's a couple of effects that I put on my frames to help them because there is a little bit of flickering still, which is really annoying. And I'm sure the D flicker in DaVinci Resolve would sort that out, but for $270, I, yeah, uh, I'll wait for that one. Um, what I will do is put frame blending on here. So I'm gonna make sure that it has that icon with those dots to those arrow. I'm also going to then check this sort of motion blur symbol as well. From the effects and presets panel, I'm going to search for camera shake de-blur. And then I'm also going to search for pixel motion blur as well. I've not seen anybody use these in combination, but I think it does help. You can tweak the effects settings by going into effects here and just changing some of these if you want to have a play around. I've only had a couple of days to play around and it's just me researching all this. So I think within time we'll find loads of different settings that work really well. You can see it's not perfect, but we're only a couple of lines of code away from a perfect animation. And this is really exciting. I can use that seed on the same character and pretty much make her do whatever I want. So the reason why I use character creator over metahumans, because metahumans are extremely currently limited. So they've only got four choices of clothing, the AR kit with the body animation. There's quite a bit of learning curve there and digging around in blueprints, as well as trying to add mocap. It can get a bit messy. The character creator workflow is just smooth. It's been there for years. It goes into iClone for animation really easy. They have their own mocap database, so everything integrates in nicely to AI. Anyway, I can't wait to see what you guys produce with this workflow. 
please tag me on any social media. I'm pretty much hashtag prompt muse on everything or at prompt muse. We do have the newsletter and we're still giving RunPod credits away. So please sign up. The link is in the description below. And as always, I will be doing a write up and more in depth description of all the instructions in this video onto the prompt muse website. So let me know what you think of this workflow and maybe what other software you will be using along with this so thank you very much and I'm excited to see what you create that will do it bye bye